Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. My name is Alex and I'm rated between 1950 and 2000 classical ELO, like officially, and therefore I'm trying to get at least 2000 ELO on my online chess.com rapid because online ratings tends to be a bit higher than in-person classical ratings. If you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, you can check them out in the playlist below, but also just feel free to watch this episode in isolation. I'm going to be talking through my thought process as I play a long form game, and then we're going to be doing some analysis afterwards to flesh out some of the ideas. And when I'm calculating, I'll be able to actually show you on the board to make it easier to visualize in the post game analysis. So we are facing the Karo Khan defense. This is one of my favorite openings from the black side. And in the previous episode, we played this opening to great effect. There's many players to play, many ways to play against the Karo. You can play knight c3, you can play d4, you can play knight f3. There's a new line with d3 called the Brayer and like knight d2, although I think that's ridiculous. We're not gonna play any of those. We're gonna play a really offbeat gambit line, which starts with pawn to b3. If you've watched some of my previous videos and you're a loyal subscriber of the channel, you may know that I have played this previously and the whole point is to play bishop b3 and after d5 gambit the pawn. My opponent, however, goes d6. Maybe that's a mouse slip, maybe he meant to go d5, or maybe he was planning on playing like a modern defense setup from the start. Either way, we're going to play bishop b2. And we just get our bishop on the long diagonal. It can't be a bad thing at all. So our idea, there is a good chance I try and fianchetto my light squared bishop as well. Because there isn't an obvious place for it to go. c4 can be very vulnerable because I can't retreat to b3. So it could be prone to getting attacked by moves like b5, knight b6 or d5. On e2 the bishop also doesn't do all that much. So, I'm tempted to go for a double fianchetto setup here. We could also play d4 and go bishop d3, however. Which I'm actually leaning more towards. d4 does cut our bishop's scope off, but our opponent's going to play knight to f6 anyway, which already cuts the scope. So let's go d4. I'm expecting my opponent to adopt a setup of knight f6, g6, bishop g7, and castles. And I believe that's the basis of the peers defense, also known as the perk. But I believe it's properly pronounced peers. Don't ask me why. <laughs> there he goes knight f6, attacking our pawn. We can go bishop d3 to defend the pawn. We can also go knight c3 or knight d2. Now I'm leaning far more towards knight to d2 because knight c3 blocks off our bishop. I can play bishop d3, but I'd rather develop my knight first. Reason being, my bishop may want to go to e2, probably d3, but it might want to go to d um, to e2 depending on what happens. I also want to make it very easy for me to castle queenside quicker which is likely the route we're going to go. So, and then try and play opposite side castling and just go at our opponent. So he goes g6. This looks like a natural move. And then we can meet moves like d5 with e5 and open up this bishop scope, even though this one will be blocked off. c4 is a move to try and control d5. But he can still play d5, and if we trade everything, then we're just left with an isolated d-pawn. If he plays d5, I want to push. I also might want to play c3. So if we do push, then we have a really strong pawn chain in the center, pointing towards our opponent's king side, where we're likely going to want to attack. f4 is also an idea. To put the knight behind the f-pawn. But I'm going to start a bishop d3 because I might put this knight on e2 to go for like f3, g4, and h4 ideas, which is very, very typical. So, yeah, knight e2 is nice. What we could also do is go knight e2, castle, king side, and then go for like f4, f5. It's another option. 
we need two as a move, but then I don't want my knight to um, go to f3, because I probably want to push this f-pawn. Most likely to f3, so I can control the, G the g4 square. So, if we go knight e2, that looks very logical. Very logical. Now, normally, in these kinds of setups against the peers' defense, this bishop is on e3 and is vulnerable to ideas of knight to g4 to try and trade it off. But here we don't have that problem. Now, again, this is an idea, but I'm also kind of tempted by c3 to go queen c2 in queenside castle. Does it block my bishop in? Yes. But not every single one of my pieces needs to be absolutely amazing. We can always reroute this bishop to a square like c1 or a3 at some point if we want. h4, h5 doesn't do anything right now because his knight defends the h5 square. I want to get g4 in before I go for that. So f3 is kind of tempting to prepare g4, but then castling queenside is kind of difficult. I could try f3, g4, knight, g3, queen e2 in kingside castle though. What's our opponent going to do? Because he's not going to sit back. If we go f3, he might try e5. And if he goes e5, I kind of want the c3 move to defend my center. Because I don't really want to take him. We could go f4 to try and control the e5 break. But then we're sacrificing control of the g4 square. So that's not ideal. So I'm going to play c3. Maybe it's not the best idea, but I'm going to massively overprotect my e4 pawn. Okay, b5. We don't even have to castle queenside. We don't even have to do it. We could even castle kingside and get him to try to overextend on the queenside. Like, if we go a4 now, he can't advance because we're going to take him. And there's problems on the B on the A file, because if he tries to go A6, then takes, takes, takes. He can't take back because our rook pins his pawn to his rook. So if we go A4, maybe rook B8, but then takes, takes, and A7 hangs. So A4, queen, B6, takes, takes. Although a4, queen b6, we could go a5. Queen c7. Could play b4, but I don't, I don't think I really want to. So a4, queen b6. a4, queen b6. Take, take. I can't find a breakthrough there. Could maybe go for like b4, knight b3, knight a5, but that feels very long winded. And he also opens up the c file, which benefits him. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go queen c2. We're going to go queen c2. Again, we're not committing to castling either side yet. He goes bishop to b7. Okay. A4 is a little bit more tempting now, but A6 actually does defend the pawn because now the rook is very well defended, so the pawn can take back without any issues. We could go F3, G4, H4. I don't think I'm actually that worried about him breaking through the queen side. We're going to start with F3. See, even with F3 on the board, we could still castle king side. We still could. We still have both options open. He goes a6. I assume his plan is c5. That's my assumption. So he defends b5 before he pushes. This looks good. It's very aggressive. Let's do it. Let's be aggressive. Yeah, his bishop's lined up with our rook. But, you know. 
it's not immediate. So c5. If he takes, we just take back. This is why we put the pawn on c3 in the first place. He might play rook c8, so if he takes, we can't take back because our queen will be hanging. <clears throat> that might be his idea. We could play d5 to lock the center, but then he could go e6. That feels a bit weakening for him, though. <clears throat> we could maybe try and play c4 if we go d5 as well to open this bishop up. Maybe we go c4 immediately. And if he takes, then take back with the bishop. Mm, I don't like opening the c-file. Because our queen doesn't have all that many options. So we're going to go d5. I mean, typically the advice is if you want to attack, then you want to lock the center shut. We might put the knight on g3 and then go for our plan of h4, h5. Okay, knight comes to e5, but I don't think I really care if he takes our bishop. I mean, all our pawns are on light squares anyway, so I don't think I'm that fast. We could go knight g3 to threaten bishop e2, which is kind of a threat, because then his knight's a bit silly. So knight g3 is probably going to trade um, bishop for knight. We could go c4, but I don't like him opening the b-file. So knight to g3 it is. This is a very complicated position. But again, we still have not committed our king. We can leave the king in the center. We can castle kingside, and we can castle queenside. Probably we'll go queenside, but it's also kind of saving us a tempo right now. Like if we'd have castled queenside, we'd be a tempo behind. So... In these opposite side castling positions, I mean, we haven't actually castled opposite sides, but, you know, we basically are. In these uh, opposite side castling positions, time is of the essence. It really is. So we want to try and make something happen as quick as possible on the king side. So we could continue with our plan of h4, but after we go h5, he's going to try and lock the position. But if we go h4 and then g5, we're going to be attacking his knight and his pawn, and we're going to force open the position, right? We're going to try and use his knight as a hook. So h4. h6, I understand the point of it, but again, it's he's using a tempo on his side of the board to like try and defend himself while we're just barreling towards him and not wasting any time bothering with defending the queen side. You know, we played c3 ages ago, just to shore the position up, and then we're just going for him. Queen b6, I think his point is he's going to play c4 and threaten queen e3, because the e3 square is undefended. We can go c4 ourselves. We can also play g5. And if he goes c4, then there's probably some issues, actually. I don't really want to allow that. We could go bishop to e2. And then if he goes c4, again, it's difficult to defend e3. I don't want to play a move like knight to f1. King e2 is actually a move here. Like, it actually is. Because it defends e3, defends f3, defends the bishop. Ah, that seems so weird, though. This looks kind of natural, because we also open our bishop up. Yeah, I don't want him to play c4. I don't want him to play it. So we're going to play c4. And the point is, if he takes, we're not going to take with the pawn. We're going to take with the bishop. I would like to take with the knight. Uh, we could actually take with the knight. If we take with the knight, I was worried about knight to f3 check. But then we just play king to f2 attacking the knight. And then his queen's hanging. And his knight can't take anything. 
So yeah, let's take. We're forcing a trade here. He's got to take us. I mean, he could play queen c7. And go for takes, takes. But then g5 looks like game over. Looks like complete game over. If he tries knight takes, bishop takes, queen a5 check, we could go bishop c3. We could we could even just march the king, but I think probably bishop c3. Just to leave the option of queenside castling open, as I keep saying, we might as well give ourselves the option. We could also still castle kingside. Just, it's a move. It's a move. Will I play it? Probably not, but not going to lie. This position looks horrible for my opponent because g5 is coming in. And if this knight, see, I was expecting knight d7 um, on this move. I was expecting knight d7. Okay, it takes the bishop. Because my plan, my idea was knight d7 means that g5 can be met with h5 because the knight is no longer under attack. Yeah, queen c7, the queen's under attack, and then g5 is just coming in. So let's play it. I did have to be careful about the move knight to h5 and something like bishop takes knight takes but if knight h5 we can just take it because our bishop is defended by the knight. The problem is his bishop is completely stuck. It's not doing anything. His queen is also not really doing anything <clears throat> and we are now forcing lines open on the king side. He can't keep them shut. Arguably knights are kind of better in this position than bishops. At least light squared bishops because this bishop's not doing anything he's going to need to play e6 to try and break out but then we're going to try and ruin his structure okay so he goes for this line if we take here then he's going to take back with the knight probably but i think it's more accurate to and also if bishop takes he could take our knight i think it's more accurate to take his knight to completely destroy his structure we're going to just completely wreck it. And we're going to force open some lines on the king side for our rooks. There goes his most valuable king side defender. This is tempting, but then maybe he survives. Although we do have the move e5. Here. Here. We could play rook g1, and if takes, then this comes with check, and then we win h5. So I like that. If we go rook g1, and then he moves his king, then maybe we can play queen c3 check. But then he goes to h7. I like rook g1. I like rook g1. If he gives us a check, he could give us a check. Could we trade queens though? No, that's not good. He can't take. That's bad. That has to be bad. Because now this is falling with check. Yeah, this is game over. I did see this, but I thought that this lost to e5. Maybe his idea is king h6? But king h6, can't we play queen to f5? Okay, what happens if we just take rook to h5 and maybe king g6? But then we just come back with check. Yeah, this is not a problem. So we're up a pawn. His king is exposed, and he has not taken the opportunity to give us a check. So we're going to queenside castle probably and bring the other rook in. We could go queen to e3 to try and come to h6, but then he could play rook here. But queen e3, rook h8, queen g5 forces king f8, and then rook to h8 is mate 
if we go queen e3 and rook g8 trying to give the king an escape, then queen h6 is mate. So queen e3 looks winning. If queen a5, then just king e2. Or king f2, actually. Just to avoid anything. Let's do it. Let's do it. Queen e3. Maybe his idea is f6. Here, here. Here, here. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. We don't even have to rush this attack. I don't want to send him this way. Like... I don't want to let him do it voluntarily, if you get what I mean. Knight c4 is kind of tempting, just to shut this queen down. We could also just queenside castle. Which we're going to do, so we can bring our other rook into the attack. There's a good chance we can end up with both rooks on the second rank. And just wipe him out, like that. Go here, here, here. He could go here. Oh, no, we can't, actually. What am I saying? Let's go check. Rook g1. Crucially, if this queen comes out to a5, attacks a2. King b1. Uh, it can't access any entrance point because our queen covers them all which is very nice and if the queen goes to b4 there's also no entrance points if she goes to b5 we can always move the knight up okay we do this probably rook over to defend e7 it's making us work for this I'm going to play knight c4. Just stop this queen from infiltrating. And also, uh, knight b6 is always on the cards now. If the queen ever leaves the defense of the b6 square. We're, again, we're a pawn up. We're low on time. But black has nothing. Okay, he's going to try and play a4. We could just play a4 ourselves to prevent him from doing that. And b3 is defended. We can also move the king up to defend b3. Because a4 will... We can be free. He might be trying to play bishop to a6. We could go queen to f4, trying to play queen to f5. I don't know if that achieves anything. He's playing this well, to be fair to him. Now, can we break through with a move like e5? I don't think so. So he just does this. Could do this. I think we should. Just force his rooks to defend. We could try and push this pawn, but he defends h8 incredibly well. So I don't really like that. We could put this knight on e6 would be in an incredible spot right now and it'd be just game over but to get to e6 we need to get to f4 and we'd have to do like some dance like this and that's going to take a lot of moves although coming back does defend a4 i suppose Could also play queen to c3 to attack a5. And if he advances, could bring the queen in. Because the only problem is our king's safety. I'd like to play a4, then queen c3. But if we go a4, then bishop a6 comes just in time. So we're going to go queen c3. I think this is the cleanest way, or at least the simplest way to deal with this. Because he's creating counterplay. He is creating counterplay. I don't like it. 
Don't like it. Could take. Let's go for a queen trade. This rook is immobile. This rook is immobile. We can push this pawn kind of freely. Bishop's under attack. The king is kind of immobile. Bishop's running out of squares. Bishop a6 makes the most sense, but then if bishop a6, then um, knight c6 and e7 falls. So bishop a8 is probably the only move. Can we just take? Yeah, we're up two pawns now. We could maybe even just try and walk our king. Okay, he does that. All right. We could push this. We could go here. Here, 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 here. No, I'd rather have there, 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 and then go rook to g4. I think. So let's go knight c4. Again, we don't want to give him anything. We're up two pawns. Bishop is in a horrible state. He actually isn't threatening to take this because knight b6 picks up the bishop if he does. So we could push. But then if we push and then the bishop moves, then I don't know how we defend it. We could force a trade, but then a4 is going to fall. I also don't want to trade my knight off. So let's go a5. Just to secure the b6 square, take the pawn off of a light square, might be useful. Then he can't play this because of check, so he moves his bishop. Knight here is going to force the king to go to the back rank to maintain defense of the pawn. But I can do that at any time. The king's not moving anywhere anyway. Let's just defend our pawn. Uh, if we can try and isolate this rook to have to defend the, this um, setup, then it could be good. Okay, bishop here as expected. Could do the knight this way rather than b6. Yeah, actually, I like that. I like that because the knight on f5 will also defend this. Can play bishop here, though. But then we have rook f4. It's ugly, but we have rook f4. Just keeping an eye on our weaknesses. He could go rook a8. But then king d2. Bishop to b4 and then I think we push and if he takes then we push and if he takes then king moves it's getting kind of dangerous but we're also giving up two pawns I don't know if I like that hmm. well let's attack the bishop This is kind of a fancy move, because if bishop takes, we have e5 with a discovered attack. Yes. Yes, and then we're forcing bishop a6, which cuts off the rook's connection to a5. That could be a big move. Yeah, but what about this? Here, 
rook here. Take, take, take. Then we have two passed pawns. We're low on time though. Oh, he just gives us the bishop. He must have missed the, that the bishop was hanging. Must have just, like, not noticed. Okay. Um, let's bring the king. Everything is defended. Um, and f3 isn't really accessible. I'd like to play king c4 and knight to f5 to kick the kick his king out. And the knight on f5 will also control the h5 square. We could just push this as well, to be fair. King c3 might not be necessary. I think that's a nice tactical finish, though. Okay. If here, here, then here. Again, we could just push. Yeah. What about this? This? There, there. But if here, here. There, there. Oh, why give him anything? Why give him anything? Let's just take. I don't even want this pawn. I'm just going to push. This pawn's irrelevant. All it does is put my knight out of the game. Okay, don't really care. Let's give you another check, force you back. And then we're going to push a7 to freeze this rook. And if you go here, then you're more than welcome to uh, take the pawn if it means we trade the rooks. Okay. Rook a1. We're just trying to freeze this rook. That's all we're trying to do. If you go king b6, we're going to play knight to c4. And if he goes king b7, maybe give him a check. Because I don't want his king to um, take up the a8 square and allow his rook to move. That's something I want to avoid. I mean, we, we, we should still be winning, but I don't see the point in giving him that luxury because I don't want our rook to have to defend both things king b7 knight here if he goes here we could give him a check and he can't step on to b5 or b7 to defend to sorry attack our rook and he resigns in this position. It's completely lost. And hey, it's a very nice game uh, against the, I guess, peers defense. I suppose we, I, I supposed it would be against the peers. I know it started as a Caro, but then he switched immediately. Let's get into the game review. Okay, so the game review gives me a 78% accuracy and my opponent 74. So very similar and kind, I mean, relatively low. I thought it was a pretty solid game, but it was very complicated, especially in that like late middle game, early end game stage, and when everything's really cramped up and compact. There's often like a lot of things that humans can't really understand. There's also stuff that engines can't understand. Like engines can't visualize piece placement that well. Like for example, in um this position. In this position, the engine does understand the uh, effectiveness of knight e4 to f5, but sometimes it can't consider like pieces like teleporting to a square, and it doesn't. It wouldn't potentially like this kind of maneuver, even if it was objectively good. Sometimes the engine struggles to visualize like I want this piece here. If you get what I mean. Anyway. Anyway, let's get into the game. So e4, c6, and we go b3. The idea of b3 is that after d5, you go bishop b2. This is kind of a 
technically bad opening. And after d takes e4, like knight c3, knight f6, knight e2, bishop f5, knight g3, bishop g6, h4, h5, queen e2. I really like this position. And it's very reminiscent of some ideas in the French, which are very similar. Uh, so after e4, e6, b3, d5, bishop b2 takes, knight c3, knight f6. Here you can immediately go queen e2 as instead of doing this knight maneuver. Because the difference is the bishop can't come to f5 like it can in the Cairo because the c pawn's been pushed and not the e pawn. Right? So against the French it's a bit better because the bishop can't get out to help in the defense. But I like it in both. Because they both have the same sort of ideas behind them. And I really like it. But anyway, that's a moot point. Because our opponent goes d6. Which in my mind, initiates the perk slash peers defense. And I, I mean, I called it. I called he would use this uh, setup, right? Anyway, bishop b2, knight d7, d4. Again, I was considering going like sort of this and playing like a double fianchetto setup. I figured since I knew the way that he was going to develop, like I knew this was what he was going for, then it would make more sense to me to go d4 and bring my bishop to d3 so that we can try and start a kingside attack, right? That made more sense to me because of the way that I assumed he was going to set up, which is what he did. So bishop g7, knight e2, again, f3 is better, but I want to attack. So we're not going to be playing all the perfect moves necessarily. Castle. Uh, excuse me. The computer's favorite move is c3. So I don't know why it's calling it an inaccuracy. But the point is I was expecting e5, which is the best move. So c3 preempts e5. So I can play, let's just say, for example, kingside castle. And after takes, I can take back with the pawn. Could I do that after he plays e5? Absolutely. But is it maybe better to do it preemptively? Yeah, you can also do that. Because I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to set up. And he didn't play e5 anyway. He played b5. Here I was considering a4 because a6 doesn't work. Because after takes, takes, bishop takes, you can't take because your rook hangs. So what I was expecting here was a uh, queen b6. And if I take, then he takes back, and then the C file opens, and I'm not really a fan of that. Because, again, I didn't really want to have to commit to castling kingside at this point in the game. And if um, after A4, Queen B6, we have A5, I thought he just drops back, and my pawn's a bit weird looking. Was there any other lines? Oh, well, the computer wants him to take me here, but what, then like knight b6? Okay, one. I guess I can't queenside castle now, but here I'd be happy to castle kingside and just say, yo, a7's really weak. What are you doing? Maybe we can play c4 and try and expand on the queenside. Who knows? Who knows? That didn't happen. We went queen c2 instead. We should b7, f3. Again, the computer doesn't like f3. But the point is that I want to attack my opponent. And I'm leaving the option of castling kingside or queenside open. I mean, we, we end up choosing neither, actually. <laughs> Maybe castling is just overrated. But a6, g4, c5. Computer kind of prefers black here. But I thought we dealt with this very well. I didn't want to take him in this position. Apparently, knight e5 is crushing. Why? Oh, the bishop's quite vulnerable. And then after bishop e2, because the queen opens up the attack, c4, and black gets full control over d3, which is a big problem. So, d5 is a good move to stop that. Yeah. He goes knight to e5. I was half expecting him to go e6, but c4, and I guess if he takes, we take with the c pawn, and we're probably bit worse but we're kind of good i'm kind of getting what i want here like 
This is open. The center is still shut, and I'm going to throw the H pawn down the board. Whilst the computer can say, yeah, no, minus three. If you look at this from the black side, this is kind of scary. Like, seeing this coming, I would personally be kind of scared of this. So, I mean, also, you could just take with the E pawn if you wanted to, like, shut down the uh, C file a bit. And you could still go with the same attack, but... <clears throat> I suppose you can argue that black has very good grip over e5. So knight to e5 was played, knight g3, which is apparently bad because of e6. But he doesn't go e6, he goes h6. And I, I called it, I said like h6 is not the way to go. Because he's kind of admitting, oh your attack is really scary, I need to spend time defending myself. What he should have done is e6 to go, yeah no your attack isn't scary. You're just stupid. What are your pawns doing? You know? And if I take him, F takes. I guess his king is kind of weak, but I also can't really exploit it. Okay. Okay, well, by the way, for the next, like, five moves, we both make mistakes, like, every single move. Like, after h6, I should be castling kingside, apparently. But I go h4. And again, e6 is the move for black. He doesn't play it. He goes queen b6. Here, I need to I need to play bishop e2. I don't. I go c4. Which... What? Oh! I can't take. Because then knight takes d3 check. Queen takes bishop b1. Bishop b2. The point is that you get the knight out of the way of the bishop with a tempo, and you win a pawn out of it. Huh. It's a cool tactic, but we both missed it. I go c4, he takes, and now I'm good. Now I'm good. Knight takes c4. This doesn't work because king f2, and you have two pieces hanging. So knight takes d3 check is played, which is apparently bad. Apparently you should have taken on c4. Bishop takes c4. My bishop's not that good, because all my pawns are on light squares, so I was kind of happy that he took my bishop, because my knight can jump over my pawns, my bishop was just stuck behind them. Queen b4 check here is a move, and yeah, the computer just wants me to run my king to the king side, which I might have done, I don't know, I mean, I can't really speak for my past self at this point. But he went queen c7, and yeah, now g5 comes, and there's problems. If he plays the more accurate knight to h7, then bishop takes, king takes. I can even go f4. If you take, then like that's suicide because h takes, the h file opens. And I'm going to play f5, which is going to open up a whole lot of lines. The thing is, if you take like this, the king does not have to take this pawn, he can just drop back to h8. And I'm better. Queen c3, f6. But like, it's not obvious how I'm going to break through. I like h5 though, because then g5, the knight can come into f5. Bishop c8, knight c3 supporting. It's a nice position, but it isn't game over. If he takes, it's game over though, I would assume. Because I can play like knight g7, knight e6. And his position is horrible. But there's no checkmate. There's no checkmate. My, the, the, the pawns are clogging everything up in this position. Which is why knight h5 surprised me. Because I could do this, but we get a kind of similar scenario, I feel like, where he kind of blocks everything up. So I instead took on h5 first. So after bishop takes, knight takes, pawn takes, I can force things open. Yeah, here rook g1, which is what I played, is the most accurate move. I did not want to take on h6, because I thought that king to h8, rook g1, rook g8, castle queen side, I'm better, but it's not game over. Although I didn't find a game over anyway. I went rook g1 though, because I thought, hey, you can't take me. And taking is a horrible move. Uh, I was so shocked. I thought king h8 made a lot of sense, 
And then I was going to take on h6. And to be fair, we get a very similar position. But I'm up a pawn. This pawn's probably going to fall. Knight c4 is going to come back in at some point. It's a fairly easy position to play. But he takes. He takes. And we take back. In h7. We took on h5, but apparently I'm mating here. Wait, what did I miss? I actually don't know what I missed. I just missed mate in five. Did, I didn't even need to see every move either. E5 check should be obvious. Why didn't I play that? I don't know. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. We took on h5 instead. King g7. Okay, queen e3 isn't great. I should have just castle queenside. And then if f6 here with the same idea. e5? And if he takes, then he's getting mated. So if he tries to go king f7 now... Then I get e6 check in. King g6, king d8. <laughs> that is so disrespectful. It's the best move, but it's so disrespectful. He can't take because this is me. It's on the back rank. And um, you can't defend the rook. This is the best move. And then, I mean, this is just easy. Whoops, not like that. This is just easy. That's funny. That's a really cool find. But okay, I Queen E3 wasn't great. And F6 is the only move to really hold on here, which he does play. We castle. See, I considered this. But here, here, and my attack's gone. And my Queen is misplaced. Apparently Queen G1 is better. And if King F7, Rook H7, King E8, Queen G7... Okay. Okay, I can see that. I guess this pawn is more of a threat now. We could be trying to trade rooks on the back rank or something. It makes sense. It's really hard to defend e8. Because the king can't move out of the way for the rook like he did in the game. So castling wasn't amazing. But king f7, we give him a check. King e8, rook g1, king d7... I see four. I thought it was good. A five. Queen H six is apparently good. F four looking for E five is good. I did consider it, but like, I didn't want to allow A four. Even though the computer might not think there's anything to worry about, I didn't see the point in giving him anything. You know, like why? There's no point because I should be dominating anyway. So Rook G G seven forced the a rook to come over and defend queen h6 here's a move queen f4 which i did consider queen f4 i did consider it but i thought the king just ran oh my god there's a knight takes d6 you can't take here because the queen hangs and if queen takes queen takes pawn takes the bishop hangs and black is completely dominated and i'm up two pawns well wow. <laughs> Again, cool tactic, but I chose to play it simply with queen c3. And after a4, yeah, we can take it. Queen a5 is a miss. I guess it gives black a bit of a chance to survive. Um, again, the bishop can't really go to a6 because of knight c6 and the e7 pawn falls. So the bishop needs to monitor this square. And if he plays moves like king c7, then e7 hangs. So, bishop a8 makes sense. We take, which is a bit inaccurate. Rook g8. Knight c4 takes, takes. Rook h8. So here, apparently we should be trading. Oh no, we should be playing a5. Oh, because e7 hangs. Why didn't I play this? And the king can't defend the pawn. So you'd have to play rook e8 to defend the pawn. And then the h-pawn just runs. And the rook's going to be deflected. Wow. 
Well, that's cool. Maybe I should have found that, but... I went for a5. Bishop b7. And here... This doesn't work quite as well, because the king can step onto the back rank. Whereas when the bishop was on a8, the king couldn't step on the back rank, because then I would have taken the bishop, because the rook's connection would have been cut off. Okay, I mixed my moves up a bit. Here... This is better. Because if you take... I can play rook e7, king e7, knight f5 and win the rook, but knight f5 straight away... And e7 can't be defended. And then d6 is going to drop. And there's also line up with the bishop. I guess you're investing in your a pawn in this variation. So rook g4 is a bit passive. Bishop a6. Knight e3. Bishop e2. Rook f4. Rook a8. King d2. Bishop b5. And here I was very happy with a4. And a4 is actually the only move that keeps a winning position. Because the problem is, as I was calculating with h5, rook a5, h6, rook a2, king c3, the rook could just go behind the pawn. Oh, then knight f5 apparently. But you can just give a check like this. The king is kind of in a box. If you try to go to b3, rook a8 and the rook defends, and we're equal material now. So a4 is the only move. a4 is the only move. And if you retreat the bishop, then the rook can't take on a5. Then I can set this whole shebang up again. Or maybe even try and push this pawn. Or go knight f5 immediately. But you get the point. After takes, apparently h5 is the best move. And if rook takes h6, rook a8, knight f5, rook h8, rook g4, and then rook to g7, winning e7. I thought e5 was more practical, though. Because if rook a5, protecting the bishop, we have ef, ef, rook f6, and I now have two passed pawns. He has one, but it can't really get through because my king and my knight are so close. So here, black enough play moves like rook a6, h5. And if you try and play like rook a8 to defend the pawn, like h6, rook here, knight f5, and e7 hangs. Sorry, uh, d6, d6. So I was very happy with um, e5, to be honest. He instead just took. I guess he just didn't notice the fact that his bishop was hanging. So we take king d6, king c3, f5, knight f5, king d5, a6. And you know, I could have maybe played a few better moves, but my point was I want to get the rook, the uh, pawn to a7. I was expecting king to uh, b7 here. And can probably just push h5 and if rook h8 i can just queen so the rook can never move because i force the um the rooks off the board and then i promote on the complete other side of the board so that was the idea so a7 king b5 we just retreat the rook give him a check and it's just game over i was calculating at the uh, very end king b7 Knight d6, king c6, rook a6, king c7. There's just nothing that black can do. I can probably just push my h-pawn here. Because my rook defends my knight and my pawn. And my knight and my rook and my pawn combine to stop the king from ever going anywhere. Like we're cutting off so many squares. And if his rook moves we just promote. So black can literally just shuffle. Like... He could basically just shuffle, and then we're just going to promote at some point. I mean, yeah, he could play king d7, we can promote, and after takes, we promote again, and then we're just left with rook and one versus king and three. But the way these pawns are, because they're split up, it's easy pickings. Like, black can't defend his position. If this pawn was on, like, d5, I probably wouldn't choose this end game because it's winning, but it's kind of difficult. But here I'm happy to sacrifice both my passed pawns and a knight for his rook. 
because it's such an easy cleanup. But my opponent knows this, so he resigns after king c7. And we win another game, and we're up to 1931 elo, 69 points off of 2000, which is the goal. And this rating climb series could be coming to an end in like the next 5 to 10 episodes. So I'm going to have to start something new after that. And you better make sure you're, yeah, better make sure that you're subscribed so that you see what, um, what I come up with. If you watch to the end, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.